Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we'll take a look at the crazy little case that is the Streetcom DA6 Small Form Factor Open Frame Tubular Vertical ITX Chassis. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we're taking a look at the Streetcom DA6. This has been sent over free of charge for review purposes from our good friends over at overclockers.co.uk. If you want to find out more about this and take a look at current pricing, there will be links in the video description. They're not affiliated ones, so please feel free to check them out and uh, see what you think of it. Now, we're going to go through today and do a little bit of an overview of this case or chassis. Can't really call it a case because it's not encasing anything. It is a very, very open frame chassis. So... This is not going to be for everyone, I completely understand that, but for those of you that like to have something a little bit different, like to have a little bit of a challenge, and like to have the utmost in terms of flexibility, this might be just the thing you're looking for. At the moment here in the UK, this is retailing for somewhere in the region of about £140. Again, links will be in the video description, so please do check those out. And that is for basically the open frame itself. Now I'll try and give you some pictures of what the frame actually looks like. I decided I'll actually do a build in this and get it fully assembled first of all to get a really good feel for it and actually so you can see kind of physically how it could work for you. The good thing about this is because it's such an open design you can basically make it fit pretty much anything. So whether you're looking for a ATX power supply, a SFX power supply, SFXL, whether you want it horizontally mounted, vertically mounted, basically it's kind of down to you and your selection of parts. So when it comes down to the actual dimensions of the unit itself, you're looking at 431 millimeters in height, that is from the very bottom to the very top of the handles, and you're looking at 212 millimeters in both the width and depth because it is effectively a kind of square or rectangular chassis. When it comes to your CPU cooling options, uh, don't think because this is a very small case chassis, that you're limited on what you can put in. There are various options available, whether you choose to go with air cooling, as we've done here, or if you decide to go down the water cooling route, you can actually install and fit a radiator in here of up to 280 mil. Now, obviously again, because this is very open plan and you can pretty much do whatever you want with these really ingenious mounting brackets, you can have things either internally, so it fits within the shape and size of the frame, or you can have it mounted externally. That is the beauty of it, it is completely open plan, so pretty much you can do what you like with it depending on how you want your finished product to actually look. As you can see with this particular build, we've gone with air cooling, and the cooler we've used in here actually is a height of 100 mil, and basically it kind of lines up almost exactly with the outer dimensions of the solid steel plates there, and I think it actually looks really good. We've chosen a color as well, which fits in very nicely, so we've got accents of chrome, We've got greys, blacks, and it's all very muted. Obviously, depending on what you go for, you can have this as bright and jazzy as you want. Stick in a load of RGB, the choice is, as always, entirely up to you. So going back to power supply options, as you can see here, we've got one of the Thermaltake small form factor power supplies. This is the Tough Power 1000 watt, which fits in there absolutely fine. But again, looking at the brackets on the side, you can see the mounting screws there. If you wanted to, you could have it mounted in the kind of vertical orientation as we've got here. Or if you want to, you can actually loosen off these brackets, slide them up a little bit, and then you can turn the power supply around the other way. Now this is gonna be dependent pretty much on what graphics card you're using, how high it is, or even if you use a graphics card at all. If you don't use a graphics card, then it opens up a whole new realm of things you can potentially do with this, including turning it into a NAS bay, of which, the Streetcom actually say, this, I find this very difficult to believe, but they've said it, so I am going to go with it. You can fit up to nine drives in this thing in NAS mode. Now, unfortunately, due to the way that Streetcom work and the fact that this is such a kind of customizable chassis, there's basically so much you can do with it. They haven't shown you all the different options. So normally when you'd buy a PC case or PC chassis, you'd get an instruction guide showing you kind of how to install your motherboard, how to install power supply, graphics card, etc., etc. Whereas with this, because it is infinitely customizable, they basically admitted that. Now there is actually a pretty decent guide over on the Streetcom site. So I would encourage you to go and take a look at that also. Again, I'll leave links for that in the video description. It's basically a PDF and it goes through various different options. The only real thing which is going to be the kind of the hard fast rule on this is going to be the motherboard mounting. So the motherboard 
mounts onto these two tubular steel standoffs and it's the standard ITX form factor. Again, I'll try and show you some shots of this open plan so you can see what it looks like without the motherboard and all the components in there. It is extremely open. So that is gonna be your kind of real limiting factor. The motherboard has to go there. There's no options to change it. So that is what it is. But in terms of actual layout, if you don't like the vertical look of this, then there's no reason why you can't actually just mount it on its side. For some people that may actually be easier and you may prefer the look of this. Again, potentially if you put water cooling in here, depending on your AIO or your pump configuration, you may find it actually works better like this for air bubbles, etc. Again, it's going to be entirely down to you. So anyway, let's take a quick tour around this thing and we'll go through all the edges so you can see exactly what's going on. I've done a load of B-roll of this with it spinning around on a carousel so you can see all the different angles and I'll intercut some of those scenes as well to give you some close-ups, etc. So this is what I would effectively call the front. Now the front section, obviously you can see your motherboard, your RAM, CPU cooler as we've got installed here. This is the SI100 uh, from Thermalright and it fits in very nicely. Again, if you don't want to have the CPU cooler kind of flush with the system itself, there's no reason why you can't put a larger tower cooler on there that sticks out 140 mil, 150 mil, whatever you want. Potentially you could even put something like the Noctua D15 in here, should you really wish to. Although with that, you'll find that the heat sinks on your motherboard potentially may interfere with that slightly. So do do your measurements beforehand. I would certainly advise that. Obviously when it comes to AIOs, with the water pump on there, it's gonna give you a lot more room. So that is the kind of the main section there for the cooling. There's also like a grab handle at the bottom, which is also replicated at the top, which I've actually moved the front IO. So the front IO consists of a USB type C port, and also there is a power button with an LED built into it. And the normal configuration, when you get this actually out of the box, if you purchase one, it will be mounted down in this bottom section here. So if you want to turn your PC on or plug in a USB type C device, then it's basically done from underneath. Potentially you might like that. Again, it is gonna be entirely up to you. Those mounting holes on the top are replicated on both sides as well. So maybe you want your power switch to be on the other side. Then obviously depending on what your graphics card is, then certainly you can do that if you want to. Again, very flexible. Those IO modules actually do come in various versions as well. So there's four additional versions available. It comes as standard with the power button USB type C. You can get other modules which will add either dual type A sockets. There is actually one which is very interesting, which for some people might be a really good option. And that is a Windows Hello on button. So basically a biometric sensor. So you can use your fingerprint to actually validate you on your Windows installation. I think that's a pretty cool thing. I did actually request that, but unfortunately it wasn't available at the time for the review. So unfortunately we haven't got that for testing, but I think that's something that I might like to add to this a little bit later on. Again, it is completely flexible. So you can, if you want to fill up all four of those ports with various devices, type C ports, type A ports, audio inputs, all that kind of stuff, should you really want to. So spin around onto this side, we've seen this already. So this is, in my particular instance, this is our PSU mounting area. So you can see the PSU here is mounted vertically. Again, if you want to change this around, you can loosen off these screws, move the brackets up and down. There are eight of them included, so you can kind of choose to do whatever you want in there. And also you can see here, we have got a riser cable, which is going from our PCI Express graphics card slot, which then fits around into the graphics card. Now, Streetcom actually do their own version of this. I think it's called the RZ4, I believe it is. And it's about 200 millimeters in length. And it's got a 180 degree connector on the opposite end. Now I've actually chosen to go with a different version. I've got one from Colink, uh, also supplied from overclockers.co.uk. This one again is 200 mils, but it's only a 90 degree bend. So some of the mounting options for the graphics card, which we'll check out shortly, uh, I didn't need to use and actually has made the build a little bit easier. Other than that, on this side, the only other thing you've got here is at the bottom, there is a module there for attaching your main power input. There is a lead which comes off of that, which then obviously you can snake around internally and it ends in a right angled connector to fit inside your power supply. Again, keeping things pretty nicely flush. Moving around onto the back side, or however you want to uh, classify it. So obviously you can see here we have got our graphics card. Now graphics card wise, you can put a graphics card in here of up to around about 320 millimeters. Again, it's gonna come down to what power supply you add in there. Obviously, if you're putting an ATX power supply in there, which is gonna be bigger and bulkier, 
and perhaps having it in the horizontal mount, then that is going to limit what you can actually do with your graphics card. But certainly ITX graphics cards, that sort of thing, smaller form factor ones are going to be absolutely fine. This particular version in here is the Elsa graphics card. This is a Radeon RX 5700, eight gigabytes, which is basically a refurbished version of the XFX um, RX 570 dual dissipation. So again, dual fan cards going to be pretty much no problem on there. Triple fan ones you might find a little bit problematic again, as long as it fits within that 320 mil size, you should be absolutely fine. There is a little bit of adjustment actually on the PCI Express mounting for the graphics card and it will support up to triple slot cards. Moving right on to this side, so this is kind of the, what I class is kind of the, the wiring side. So you can see all of the cables coming out of our power supply. Again, with the power supply, if you want your system to look a little bit neater, then potentially cable mods are gonna be coming to the rescue there. Get your own custom cables made up. I think it actually looks okay. I would suggest going with a modular power supply on this so you don't have to have all the additional cables there tucked in. Although there is a little bit of room behind the graphics card and behind the motherboard tray to actually put your cables should you need to. It's not the neatest in this particular view, but it does work quite well. And also you can see I've added here three of the adjustable brackets and also there is a riser bracket as well, which actually has little clips on. They do supply some reusable cable ties as well. So if you want to cable manage that in a little bit better, you can do. I've actually used it for the EPS cable, which runs down to the bottom here, but again, it's your case, your choice, use it however you see fit. If you want a more kind of open and bare look, then you can remove those altogether. The actual bars themselves aren't structural. They are just for mounting really. The main mounting hardware is obviously these uh, tubular frames, which are pretty heavy duty, as are the steel top plates. So that is a, uh, a brief look at the side, so you can get an idea of what's going on there. Again, on the top, mounting holes there. For your IO, you can change those however you see fit. Moving right on to the bottom. So again, this is gonna be one of those sections which you can't really do a great deal about because it's kind of uh, fixed in stone what goes on here. So you've got your IO panel there, which again, you can put your power switch there should you wish to, or a Windows Hello switch, a couple of extra USBs. You've got your IO section here. There is a bit of a gap as well. So there's about an uh, inch and a half gap between the actual bar here or the mounting frame and the motherboard IO. So if you're a little bit concerned about possibly in putting in kind of HDMI cables, display port cables, dongles, those kinds of things, you should be absolutely fine. I haven't experienced any problems myself, although I haven't attached the antenna for the Wi-Fi. although on this particular board, they are just SMA connectors and a wire to a external aerial. But if you wanted to screw in normal aerials, you could do, although obviously do bear in mind, there is gonna be uh, aerials in the way if you're plugging in IO, again, down to the individual and what board you choose to put in there. If we look a little bit closer at the bottom, so you can see this is the graphics card mounting slot area. So you can move it forward or backward. I've actually put it forward facing out more just to give a little bit of room behind for cable management. It will, like I said, fit up to a triple slot card in there. And something which is actually very cool in this, again, with the idea of everything being customizable and adjustable, there are these screws here. So if you want to, you can actually widen this out. Now the standard setting is some of the region about 130 mil between there and there, but because you've got the adjustment there, you can have it up to 145 mil wide should you wish to. Again, when it comes to mounting your graphics card, there's a lot of flexibility. And also when it comes to the PCI Express riser card or cable that you use, you may want to use that adjustment to actually make that riser fit nicely. It is designed to work with a 180 degree connection, but I've got a 90, so that extra kind of little bit sticking out means I had to move it forward. Hopefully you understand what I mean there. It does kind of make sense. And again, you've got your power input at the bottom there. Again, with that, it isn't any problem. So there is plenty of room for the cable to come out and run underneath, that's absolutely fine. If you don't want to use that, you can actually detach it and just plug a power cable straight into your power supply. Again, it's entirely your choice. So let's take a quick look at the accessories which come with this. Now the brackets themselves, there's eight of them, like I said already, and those are all on uh, Torx type fittings or hex fittings, uh, T10s I've been using. They work fine, although they do actually include a tool in there. So some of the screws on here are uh, T8 Torx, some are T10, hex, whatever. Anyway, you get the general idea. So essentially, you can use the ball joint in there and just loosen those off. Actually, that's the wrong size, so use that one. So you can loosen that off, undo the screws, 
and then you can move these up and down however you see fit. So it's nice that they've included the tool there just in case you don't have your own. So those slide up and down or potentially if you don't want it on there at all, you can just undo it fully, release the screw and the clasp and then you can just pull all this off. If you undo both of them, it's actually quite an ingenious little mounting system actually. At first it is a little bit fiddly. I'll be completely honest with you. It was extremely frustrating to begin with, which is why really I feel this isn't essentially designed for novice builders. It's gonna be someone who has a little bit of experience with building PCs and doesn't mind getting their hands dirty, so to speak. So these are the kind of hook brackets and they're actually plastic coated on the edge as well so that when you do slide them up and down, they don't damage the uh, stainless steel on there, which is cool. They've actually done them as well. They are quite short. So when you actually put them together, you do have to make sure that the bits are in the right place, otherwise it all kind of falls apart. And the reason they've done that is because they don't want any kind of sharp edges sticking out or protruding. There's nothing actually sticking out which could uh, catch or tear anything, which again, adds to make it a slightly cleaner and uh, more refined look, at least in my opinion it is. So these have actually got very small, I'm not even sure what you would call these things, um, some sort of connector. So you just pop those through the holes, top and bottom. And then when you put the screws through, it kind of holds it all in place. So yep, yeah, that's a very straightforward, very, I would say simple to do. It is once you're used to it. At first you get it and it's actually pretty daunting. You're looking at it thinking, oh my God, where do I even start with this? But actually as you get into it, it's fine. And you do find that the flexibility is excellent because you can basically say, right, okay, that doesn't fit, what can I do? And in which case you start taking things apart, putting it back together. It's kind of like a, a grown up version of Lego or Meccano. Anyway, back to the accessories. So there is a PCR Express blanking plate, should you wish to add that in. For me personally, I didn't bother because it's just difficult to get to and it's fine. It's not as if it's gonna be stopping dust getting in because yes, very, very open. You've also got some mounting options here. So little pull throughs. So these are gonna be for mounting things like fans. So because these are basically wire, if you put a fan to it, you're gonna get some vibrations come through. So using these little rubberized mounting uh, pull throughs are gonna be a very good option and you get eight of those included. Also, like I said, there are some reusable cable ties so you can slot those through where we've got our mounting section here. Again, I'll try and give you some close ups of this stuff. So you can put those through there and reuse them should you wish to. I would say you're probably best doing the cable tying towards the end because um, there's a very strong chance that you'll reorganize or relay what is going on to get it just right for yourselves. Again, being reusable is excellent. Also, there are some rubber mountings as well. So these actually clip around the tube sections. So you can put those on. So if you're mounting this onto a surface and you want it to be a bit more stable, then you can do that. Uh, top, bottom, sides, wherever you want to put those. So there's four of those included. You also get some PCI Express riser mountings here with various size screws and also uh, additional tubes there to space things out a little bit should you need to. And then you've got extra mountings, the actual kind of clamp section and screws. And then you've got your motherboard screws, etc. Something else which I found a little bit of a kind of issue, well not an issue really, just one of those things that when you're actually starting building this, the very first thing you're gonna do is put your motherboard in pretty much. And I looked through and was like, okay, which screws do I use for the motherboard? Now it does actually make sense after a while, if you take all the screws out, there are four which are specifically threaded for the motherboard standoffs. The rest, there's all multiples of, so that kind of narrows it down, but it doesn't actually say in the instructions. So if you're getting this for the first time and you're putting your motherboard in, you think, what the hell screws? Just take all the screws out and look for the four that are the same. They are the only four, and those are the ones that hold the board in place. So I think that is pretty much it for the accessories. In terms of kind of my final thoughts, I really like this. It's one of those things which it is, well, it's definitely unique. There's not gonna be many people that have one of these. Depending on what your use case scenario is gonna be, if you're gonna have it as a display PC somewhere, then I think it makes a, a pretty bold statement. If you just want something which is really small form factor and relatively open for testing purposes, then potentially it could do that for you as well. Although I would say the uh, mounting bars there, even though they are really strong, when you're putting pressure onto your motherboard, actually installing RAM, there is a little bit of flex there. So kind of constant taking in and taking out of parts may weaken that over time. Probably not, it is very solid, but I thought it was worth mentioning anyway. But yeah, other than that, I think it's absolutely great. Dust clearly is gonna be a concern. 
if dust or things like that is going to be something that you are worried about, then clearly an open frame chassis is not for you anyway. But if you want the absolute optimum in performance, and I really do mean that, obviously it is going to be extremely powerful and it is going to be running very, very cool, depending on your setup anyway. It's going to be pulling in fresh air basically all the time. So depending on the actual ambient temperature in your room, if it's a cold room, the PC is going to run super cool. If it's in a warm room, it's going to run slightly cooler, but it's still going to be considerably better than any closed case because you do have that kind of recirculating of air, etc. And again, when it comes to things like the graphics card, your graphics card is going to run very cool. I've actually been testing this on here and effectively it runs exactly the same as it would from an open test bench, which in terms of PC cooling, you can't really get much better than that. So if you do want low temps and uh, everything to be nice and open and visible, then I think this is definitely worth a look. But what I think about it isn't important, what you think about it is. So let me know your comments in the comment section. I'll be actually really interested to see what you think about this. I know there's gonna be some people which just hate the idea of it all being open. I totally get it. But again, there's gonna be a large community of people out there which really love this kind of open frame industrial type look. And I think this is gonna be the case for you. Now, 140 pounds, I think it is a lot of money for what it is, obviously. If you spend £140 on ATX case, then you generally get a whole lot more. But with this, you do get absolute flexibility, a tiny chassis, extremely well made, and yeah, just ridiculously flexible depending on what you want to put in it. So thanks very much to overclockers.co.uk and also Streacom for sending this over for review purposes. I think that's going to wrap things up. If you've got any comments or questions, stick them in the comments section below. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.